Hey guys, today we're going to be learning about the slope intercept form, the y intercept, and the x intercept. So let us go ahead and dive right into it. So far, we've been looking at linear equations that have the y isolated onto the left side. This is a specific way to write the linear equation, and we call this form the slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form of an equation follows this format, where m and b are numbers, and of course x and y are our variables. So here are some examples of what linear equations in the slope-intercept form might look like. Now, what about this last one here? At first glance, it might seem as if there's no m and b values. Well, there is. The m here is actually 1. And since 1 times x is just x, this is why we can represent it like so. Also, the b here would be 0, because adding by 0 would be the same thing as writing nothing. Great. Oh, and you might be wondering, what other forms are there of writing a linear equation? Well, there certainly are other forms of linear equations that express the same line, only that they express them in different ways, such as the standard form and the point-slope form. But we'll explore those forms in another lesson. Just remember that the slope-intercept form follows this format, where we have our y isolated onto the left side. Now, what's interesting about the slope-intercept form is that when the equation is simplified down to this state, it makes it easy for us to identify the slope of the equation and the y-intercept. In this form, the slope is always equal to this m right over here, and the y-intercept is equal to b, hence why we call this form the slope-intercept form. So what do we mean by y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is the place in which the line will intersect the y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is at a place where x equals 0. So in a graph like this one, when x equals 0, y equals 3, making our y-intercept equal to 3. And in this graph, the line crosses the y-axis at negative 1, making negative 1 the y-intercept. Awesome! So now that we know what the y-intercept is all about and can identify what it is simply from the slope-intercept form, let's try a quick question together. So for this equation, what would be the value of the slope and the value of the y-intercept? Well, remember the slope is the value in front of the x when y is isolated, so that would be 5, and the y-intercept would be negative 1. Good. Now, that was pretty easy, right? Well then, let's imagine that we've got a linear equation like this one. Two different students give their answers to what they think the slope and y-intercept for this equation would be. It's now your turn to determine who has the right answer and who has the wrong answer. Well, in this case, student B has the right answer. Now, it's important to be careful here. Some people might assume right away that the coefficient number right in front of the x variable is automatically the slope. But this is only the case when we've already isolated the equation to have the y variable alone on the left side. In this situation, we've got to first divide both sides by 4 to isolate for y to get the following. Of course, now our slope would simplify down to just 1 over 2, and our y-intercept would be 1 over 4. Now, we know that the y-intercept can be identified by the b variable here, and that this is the point where the line intersects the y-axis when x is equal to 0. If we wanted to actually test this out, we would substitute 0 for x. And notice how, regardless of what the slope would be, we would get y equals b, making the y-intercept located at 0, b. 
What this means is that if we were given a table of coordinate values and one of the points have an x value of 0, then we can expect that the y value to automatically be the y-intercept, or shall I say the b variable, in the point-slope form in the linear equation. Great! Now, since we've learned about what the y-intercept is in this video, let's learn about what the x-intercept is. Remember how the y-intercept was the point at which x equals 0? Well, the x-intercept, on the other hand, is the point at which y is equal to 0. So, naturally then, the x-intercept is the point in which the line graph intersects the x-axis. So, if we have a linear equation like this one, what would the x-intercept be? Hmm. Well, once again, the x-intercept is at a point where y is equal to 0. Therefore, we would plug 0 in for y, and we'd get the following. Now, all we need to do is solve for x by subtracting both sides by 2, and then dividing both sides by 3, to get our x value as negative 2 over 3 when y is equal to 0. Thus, our x-intercept occurs at negative 2 over 3, 0. Awesome! So, that's it for this lesson. Now that we've got a good introduction to the slope-intercept form and the x and y-intercepts, we'll move on to some more concepts related to linear equations in our next lessons. Well, until then, make sure to keep practicing to get a good hang of this concept, and we will see you guys in the next one.